so to do um, risk objects down, um, I just um, get the patient to sit on the bed on the opposite side of where I am. Um, and uh, I always just do a fairly systematic approach looking for wrist uh, pathology. But as I said earlier, it is better uh, if you've got a, a clinical question that you want answers uh, directly as opposed to a general risk pathology. Okay, so if we look at the if we look at the wrist, um, I just looking for compartment one. Just get the patient to relax their hand. Um, and just get them to relax their thumb. And with this, uh, once again, we use. Um, I generally use high frequency and native imaging. I don't use harmonics uh, a lot. So this is um, compartment one. So we have just sliding from distal wrist coming down. You can see that they separate. So this is at the level of the proximal carpus. And then we've got EPL going that way and APL over here. So um, the APL inserts onto the base of the thumb. And it's the thicker of the two tendons. So when we're doing wrist ultrasound, I use um, a lot more gel. And you need to use very light probe pressure. So you can see here, this is um, where you get that stenosing tenosynovitis with diclodobans. And it would be, you can see here that there's uh, one sheet there and the other sheet just here. So it would be important if you're doing a steroid injection, uh, 40 clovanes, you'd need to put some steroid in this sheet and also into this sheet. So if we come up a little bit more proximally, we can see that these tendons actually start off over on this part of the wrist and then come across. So Extensive carpi radialis mollis and brevis come this way, APL, EPV come this way. So it's at this junction here where we commonly get that intersection syndrome. So you can see here, just as I'm up a little bit higher on the wrist, as I come down, see where those two tendons meet, go over the top of each other. So that's a very common site for um, proximal intersection syndrome. So once again, use um, colour, and we also look at it in two planes just to make sure that there's no um, sheath fluid or anything. Um, so to go to the next compartment, so compartment two. So these two here, uh, extensive carpi radialis mollis and brevis. Okay. Where's, where's the list uh, uh, of prominence there? So to find the list of tubicle, just start 
with the probe on the dorsal aspect of the wrist, and then just slide inferiorly, and it's that point. So this is compartment two, compartment three. Và bên về phía quay ấy là ngăn hai về phía trụ của cái cổ lister là cái ngăn ba. So we come over to compartment three. So this is uh, extensor uh, pollicis mollis, and you can see that it comes across past lister's tubercle, and then it courses over the top of ECRL and ECRB. Mình thấy cái cái gân cơ duỗi uh, dài đó, đó là phía trên, thì nó sẽ đi xuống bắt chéo qua cái gân cơ của cổ tay quay và trụ. And this is the site of distal intersection syndrome. So if we come around a little bit more, so we're now on compartment four. So we've got the red maculum going over the top. So we've got the red maculum going over the top. As we come more distally, you can see the individual um, tendon fibers starting to splay out to the fingers. And then we can turn trans and we can wiggle the fingers. So we just want to make sure that that's all moving nice and smoothly. And then we come around to the uh, ulna aspect. This is extensor carpi ulnaris. And it sits in a little bony groove in the um, ulna aspect or the most lateral aspect of the ulna. Đây là cái màu của gân giữa của tay trụ phía của của xương trụ. It's got a red maculum that sits over the top and secures it to that bony groove. Cái màu cái cái gân giữa này nó có cái mạc giữ ở phía trên. And then as it comes out over the deep, this is the train uh, TFCC, the train and fibro cartilage. Ở phía sâu hơn đó là phức hợp tam giác sụn sờ. And then you can follow that down onto the base of the fifth metatarsal cuff. So that is coming down under the base of the fifth metacarpal. So to check for instability, you just get the patient to to move their wrist. Just relax. And it's important just to get the patient to relax their wrist. Yêu cầu bệnh nhân nghiêng chuỗi của cổ tay về phía trụ. And then you just move it yourself to see if we can get that to pop out of the groove, which it, which it's not. Xoay cái bàn tay. So to look at uh, triangle fibro cartilage, just drop our frequency down a little bit. So this is the this is extensor carpi ulnaris over the top, and this is the TFCC in here. Mình uh, điều chỉnh tăng cái phần số đầu dò lên thêm nữa để khảo sát được cái đường cơ dụng của tay trụ và phức hợp tình giá sụn sợ trên bằng cách dọc. And once again, just to check the integrity, uh, we just um, own a deviate to see if we can see any gaps or any um, ganglia that we can get out through there. Mình khảo sát cái độ bảo toàn của cái gân dũi này bằng cách là cho di chuyển nghiêng về phía trụ của cái bàn tay uh, để khảo sát coi có cái uh, nang của bao bọc dịch hay không. Because if there's a, a defect in here, normally the patients are able to point directly on where they're sore. So they one finger test, right on where they're sore. Um, so just on the dorsal aspect again, uh, if we find that list is typical, just here. And then if we slide towards the fingers, this is the scapomulinate ligament, just here. So we want to make sure that there's no tears or ganglia or fluid in that area. 
xác định là còn đi chạy này có rắc hay không có nang đang leo hay không có tụ dịch trong cái uh, khớp thì còn hay không and the other thing that we can do is just grab underneath the patient's um, wrist and with your fingers pointing in mình kiểm tra bằng cách dùng hai đầu ngón tay mình ấn vào cái điểm đau chỗ dây chằng thì mình apply uh, pressure just to see if we can push any fluid or separate those bones to see if there's any instability uh, of that ligament so just by like flexing and extending à, mình ấn như vậy để giúp cho làm di chuyển cái dịch uh, mà xuất hiện sau khi rách một cái dây chằng nếu như mà không thấy được thì mình dùng biện pháp này mình sẽ giúp mình thấy rõ là có dịch hay không uh, the other thing that we look at uh, is just having a look at the dorsal capsule uh, in through here so this is uh, the scaphoid here so it's common to see fluid or um, hyperemia um, or um, thickening in this area um, and once again just move the patient's wrist and bend it just to make sure that all those joints uh, are moving quite smoothly uh, and there's no fluid coming out Đây, mình cũng dùng cái động tác để gấp duỗi cổ bàn tay để kiểm tra coi có cái dịch ở trong cái khớp này không. Um, so to have a look at the uh, vulva aspect of the wrist. Giờ mình khảo sát cái mặt lòng của cái cổ tay. So if we come down here. So if we look here, this is the nerve. So to localize the nerve, actually start up a little bit higher in the forearm. And then, sát cái thần kinh giữa bắt đầu là từ giữa cẳng tay càng tốt, à, rồi mình đi xuống rồi ngón tay trên khoảng cách ngang. And then by using a, a nice smooth movement, you're actually able to watch that nerve come up and over and then into the carpal tunnel. Và di chuyển trượt cái đầu dò xuống dưới để theo dõi cái đường đi của dây thần kinh giữa so dưới cái mặt điểm lên đó. You can see that it's actually coming up through. Uh, the muscle planes just here, so you're able to follow it now all the way up. So as we come up and over, so this is at the point of the carpal tunnel. So we've got the uh, piscoform and, and hook a hamate and the plants retinaculum sitting over the top. À, đây là dùng hai cái móc xương của xương móc với lại cái uh, xương thì bên này là nơi cái dạng mạch giữa lưng cấp nó bán vào thì ở cái dây thần thần kinh giữa nằm ngay ở dưới. So we use Kama Doppler just to make sure that um, there's no persistent median artery. À, mình cũng dùng chế độ Doppler để loại trừ cái trường hợp là thần kinh trụ và thần kinh giữa lột lưu. And I just get the patient to wiggle their fingers. Yêu cầu bệnh nhân là xoay gấp giữa cái ngón tay cái ngón miệng. And what you do is, is watch this nerve and make sure that it's moving around quite freely. With patients with carpal tunnel syndrome, the nerve becomes quite thickened and it becomes stuck uh, in the tunnel so it doesn't move. So the other thing that we look at is in the longitudinal plane. So once again, we look at make sure there's no carpal change as it comes down through that retinaculum. So once again, that's good. And then just wiggle. Once again. So when you're doing the dynamic nerve thing, you must use very light probe pressure. If you push too hard, you'll actually stop the nerve from moving, so you need very light pressure. Um, so that's the nerve. So if we have a look at the ulnar nerve, it's much smaller. And it sits right next to the uh, artery. So this is the nerve just here. And then if we come down, we just watch that go through Guillaume's canal. And you can see that there's no no masses or compression uh, on that nerve.
mình không có thấy trên trường hợp này không có thấy chèn ép trong trụ. Yeah, mình cắt dọc của thằng trụ. So it's a little bit more uh, medial to the artery. So there's the artery, just a little bit more medial, and that's the nerve going down there. Thằng mặt trụ thì sẽ nằm ở phía trong hơn so với đầu mặt trụ. Um, so these are the flexor tendons uh, underneath the the median nerve. So just figure you think. So just do a quick move. So we just watch the movement. So the nice smooth movement of those flexor tendons. And once again, we can make sure that um, you know there's no tenosynovitis uh, down in the flexor tendons, just down in here. A common thing to have a look at, uh, a lot of um, clinicians get confused between decro veins and arthritis uh, of the first carpal metacarpal joint. <laughs> so they're, they're very closely together. So to look for OA of the first carpal metacarpal joint. We just look in here. So we're just making sure that those bony margins are nice and smooth. And there's no uh, osteophytes or synovitis or uh, It's very common for us to do um, ultrasound guided injections uh, into this joint. Yeah. À, một siêu âm chụp bài sơ cổ tay của tôi rồi hả? Các anh chị có hỏi gì không ạ? Yeah. 